Jesus, you are too consistent to leave me halfway. Yeah. What you start, you always finish. Lord, I've come to realize that you are too faithful to fail me. What you start, you always finish. Lord, I'm here to testify. You are too faithful to fail me.
are too committed to leave me. Oh Jesus, you are too consistent to leave me halfway. Yeah. What you start, you always finish. Lord, I've come to realize that you are too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to fail me. You are too loving to leave 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome each and every one of us tonight. And I trust God that that's what He has for us to do. To bless our souls in Jesus' name. Uh, let us pray. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory for the gift of life and for the privilege of living. We have all taught us a lesson that every time we sleep and we wake up, it is a privilege and not a right. And so, Lord, we want to say thank you today for the gift of life and the privilege of living. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. We will thank you concerning our lives, our family, and everything that represents us. Thank you for our neighbor women of honor. Thank you for that which you are doing in our different places of work or of uh, worship today. We turn all the glory back to you. We say, exalted in the name of Jesus. Tonight we have come to learn that which will help us to maximize our potential elsewise as our neighbor women of honor. Lord, we pray you speak through the speaker. And it help us to apply our heart onto wisdom to put mm -hmm. into practice everything that we have taught in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. We Thank soak you. ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Blood I of soak Jesus. the speaker in the blood of Jesus. Blood I soak everyone on this platform in the blood of Jesus. Blood I soak you here in the blood of Jesus. Blood Take of Jesus. authority over powers mm -hmm. and rulers of darkness in high places that we want to militate against your purpose tonight. We say, Lord, by the authority in the name of Jesus and by the potency in the blood of Jesus, we neutralize their power and their activity tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mother for Father. Thank you. Give you all the praise. Yes, Lord. Give you all the glory. Yes, Lord. And we pray and receive the thanksgiving in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And God will say, Amen. I want to welcome especially my guest tonight. And my guest is no other person. Than He's operations manager of business school in Netherlands, Nigeria, with 17 year hands on and on experience in education management, covering sales and marketing of services, operations and customer service. He holds a first degree in accounting and an MBA from business school in Netherlands a highly resourceful, innovative, enthusiastic individual. Morenike is the Vice President Education at BSN Toastmaster Club, coordinator of alumni, of Olas alumni. That is my secondary school um, set alumni. That is 8994. A fitness enthusiast, a three-time marathoner, and a member with Pacet Preset our sports club. Our favorite quote is live, live, laugh, and love. I join me to welcome my set alumni set coordinator, a friend, and a sister, Murenike Adeyeye. You are welcome, my sister. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sis. Thank you so much. Thank you most especially for having me. 
thank you for batting this program, for batting this ministry. Thank you for the good work you're doing. We appreciate it. And our prayer is that the Lord will continue to strengthen you, uphold Amen. you, and bless the work of your hand. Amen. 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 A beautiful evening to everyone on the platform, or to everyone listening to me this evening. It's a great privilege to be in your presence and to have the opportunity to come and share from the little that uh, I believe that I have. I believe you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And you can see my screen. Yes. yes. Okay. We have little time in you knowing yes. tomorrow is Monday and we have to quickly prepare for all the other things we need to do. So I would like to share with us on your wellness. The topic for today is your wellness. Here is a few highlights we'll be going through. What is wellness? In the introduction, why it matters, the type of wellness we have, the dimensions of wellness, wellness and Christianity, and your journey to wellness. And then, of course, we'll have question and answer session at the end of this uh, of, of today's presentation. Now I will have to answer this. The primary goal of each of us is to be amiable in nature. What does it mean to be amiable, to be kind, to be lovely, to be gentle, to be good, to be everything beautiful? And as seen in the name of this ministry, which we are all part of this evening, Amiable Women of Honor Ministry, it means to be pleasant, good-natured, friendly, gracious, and all of that. But without being in a good wellness state, we will not be as amiable as much as we want. And basically, that is what this session is about, how to better ourselves. And of course, I would like to first share this quote. The greatest wealth is good health. We can have a million dollars in accounts. We can have 10 billions. But if we don't have good health, we don't have anything. What this has taught us, the, a, a clinical example of this is the pandemic, COVID-19, it's coming. And the, I mean, we were all affected here, even here in Nigeria. And of course, by the time the second wave came, we could relate to names that were being ruled out that people that died, billionaires, people that had access to jet, access to best of healthcare, but they all passed away. So tonight, I want to reemphasize the greatest wealth we can have as human beings is good health. I would like to quickly share definitions on wellness. The Global Wellness Institute Divine Wellness as the active pursuit of activities, choices, and lifestyles that lead to a state of holistic wellness. Pursuit of activities, choices, and lifestyles that lead to a state of holistic health. And of course, there are two important aspects to this definition. The active pursuit, that means you are intentional about it. You are intentional about your choices, about your actions, about the things you're doing. You have to be intentional about it. That is what wellness is all about. And also wellness is linked to holistic health. That is, it extends beyond physical health. Many of us, when we talk about health wellness, we think it's just about exercise, running, weight loss, and all of that. No, it's far beyond that. It incorporates so many dimensions that if you're able to work on all of this together, you know, it brings out a healthy person in us. Of course, here's a circle of wellness, what it is represents from physical to mental, spiritual, environmental, social, and emotional wellness. Like I defined earlier, is an individual pursuit. You have to, is a, is a, is a choice, is a responsibility that is in the hand of each and every one of us. Our behavior, our lifestyles, it is influenced by the things that we do physically, the environment we interact with, the parties we go to, the social media you follow, the accounts you follow online, the environment you live in, they all team up together to make who you are. So many times I've explained this earlier, we confuse this with being healthy, well-being, happiness. No, it goes beyond being happy. It goes beyond our well-being that we are healthy. It goes beyond that. 
is associated with active process of being aware and making choices that lead towards an outcome of optimal holistic health and well-being. That is the total in totality. Why, when we talk about wellness, why does it matter? What is it about this wellness? What is what's the big deal, big deal about it? Maintain optimal level of wellness is absolutely critical to living a higher quality of life. Our emotions relate to our well-being. And of course, it affects our actions, it affects the things that we do, it affects the things that we say, it affects how we relate to our husband, it affects how we relate to our children. Therefore, it is important that each and every one of us, we do stress and we live in optimal wellness. And here again is the circle of you know, wellness. When we talk about the physical, when we're talking about physical fitness, well, wellness, we're talking about a healthy body, through exercise, we are talking about what you eat, your nutrition, your food, your balanced diet. When we talk about physical, we are talking about sleep. I'm sure so many, some of us don't know how important, how critical sleep is. I, I want to tell you one truth tonight. Your sleep is king. You must prioritize your sleeping time. Don't let us say because we are women, we are strong, we are everything, and then we don't have good rest. We don't ensure that we take at least seven to eight hours of rest. I know it may seem impossible in the world that we are living now, but please try all that you can to ensure that you achieve at least a minimum of seven hours of sleep. It is king. It is the, it's like a medicine to your body. When you're well rested, you're okay, your mental capacity, your emotional, everything, you, 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 you become well when you sleep and you wake up and you're, and you're okay. Of course, when we talk about mental and intellectual, that is engagement with the world, with the world through learning, pro learning problem solving, creativity, mental clarity, emotional, and this, you're, you're in touch and you're aware. You know, some people live in denial, but you should be able to live consciousness uh, with, with, with the consciousness of being aware of your environment, being aware of your situation and being able to separate emotions. Of course, we talk about spiritual as well. It's a search for meaning and purpose in human existence. Why are we here? Why are we here on earth? What is the purpose by which we are here? What are we supposed to do? What is our responsibilities? Social, connecting and interacting with people, contributing to other people. Some people's social skill is so bad and so poor. Some people's skill in relating with their colleagues at the office is so bad and so poor. And these are things that we need to work on. Our environment, a healthy physical environment, free of hazard, awareness of the role we play in bettering the environment. Some of us, I, I don't want to believe we'll have anyone here that will be in the habit of littering the environment. It's all part of it. Is all part of it when we talk about wellness, when we talk about doing the right thing, living in the right environment and making sure that we put ourselves in the right environment for growth. I will now be sharing four dimensions of wellness. My talk will totally center around this, what we need to do, what they are, and how we need to improve them. We have occupational wellness, we have spiritual wellness, we have physical wellness, we have intellectual wellness. When we put all these four together, when we are when we, we are able to balance these four, then we are able to live a, a, a beautiful life. But of course, when we struggle with any part of this, it, it, it affects our total and general well-being in, 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 in several ways. Quickly, I want to share what occupational wellness is all about. Occupational wellness focus on our search for calling, participation that provides meaning and purpose is the ability to achieve a balance between work and leisure. We have to address workplace balance here now, work-life work balance. This is talking about work-life balance, building relationship with your coworkers. We must take note that we are spending about eight or nine to 10 hours with our coworkers. These are people that we probably do not know them from, from anywhere until you join a certain company and then this is your person you see and you spend the day with. So I believe you must have cordial relationship with, your, with them because when you have um, a, a, a not too good relationship with your co-workers, it affects your productivity, it affects who you are. You take the baggage of whatever challenges you have at work, you take it back home and those, I mean, it becomes a vicious circle. 
your career encompasses so much of your time and that is why it's important for your overall well-being do you love what you're doing do you enjoy going to work does your career offer you a manageable workload so many of us are stressed do you have a balanced life? Do you have your weekends to yourself? Do you take time off work? Do you go on leave? These are things that we need to look at. These are things that we need to review. We need to ask ourselves. How do we improve our occupational wellness? We need to write out our goals and create a plan to reach them. What's your goal? To become a chartered accountant. How do you intend to achieve that? How do you intend to do that? Are you motivated to keep working towards it? Do you enjoy what you're doing? Do you need skills that you need to increase and knowledge that you need to do? Some of us, we've not been, we don't read books. We don't, um, we don't, we have not learned anything, any trade or any skill that could add to us. What's the benefit of your current job? Do you have connections with your coworkers? Are you balancing life? You know, many of us come back from work, we are tired, we snap at the children and all of that, we snap at our husband, oh, I'm tired, I've been driving all day, I've been stuck in traffic. These are things that we need to ask ourselves and see how we can balance, we must balance it to enable us to enjoy a to total wellness. When we're talking of spiritual wellness, we're not just talking of spirit cocoa in terms of uh, tongue speaking and all of that. I'm going to break it down and bring it to, uh, to relatable terms to us. We represent your personal beliefs, your value, you know, which means your meaning, the purpose, sense of balance and peace. Spiritual wellness refers to the practice of integrating those beliefs and value and actions towards bettering both yourself and the world around you. A person who is spiritually well examines their personal value and their belief. They search for deeper meaning of life. They have a clear understanding of right and wrong. It reflects on what they do. They meditate on it and they find joy in everyday life. So this is something we need to do. We need to do like a total check on ourselves and realize where are we at any point or any dimension of our life. How do we improve our spiritual wellness? We have to explore our spiritual core. You have to take time to determine what values, principles, what do you believe in? Are you using your spirituality to drive your thoughts and actions to give you a better meaning to your life? Do you look for deeper meanings to your life? Do you analyze occurrence of patterns? Do you, are you aware how to achieve a happy and healthy life? Are you expressing yourself what is on your mind? You know, do you write down your thoughts? Do you have plans, thoughts? Even spiritually, you can have thoughts planned. What do you intend to do? How do you intend to achieve it? So even spiritually, we are being referred to, we are being asked to write down our thoughts, have a plan, create a plan, work towards it, have a goal, work towards it so that we can live happy and be free. And of course, do we take time to travel? Do we see the world? Do we go around, you know, travel the world? Do we enjoy being in solitude? Do you enjoy being by yourself? Maybe 10 minutes or 30 minutes, your me time. How do you spend it? We need to think positively without negative thoughts that could enrich our life for certain, you know. Then we leave space for positive changes that we desire over time. We should take time to meditate. When we meditate, we can meditate on the word of God. We have our Bibles. Most of us have our Bibles on our phones now. We can meditate 10, five minutes, take out a word, a Bible verse, reminisce on it, focus on it, you know, think on it so that you buy it and then you go about doing it and living it. You know, Christianity is not just about knowing what to do. It's also about doing it because it's all about our work in life is about doing. We have to actually take steps to ensure that we are actually practicing what we believe in. So when we believe in kindness, we must ensure that each day we are kind to the next person that we get to meet. And of course, when we're talking about physical awareness, we talk about discovers our eating habits, our nutrition, are we taking balanced diets? Do we exercise? Do we go to, do we know the appropriate health care? that we are supposed to see as women, do we do um, this um, cervical cancer test that we are being asked to do? There are certain tests that women are supposed to be doing from age of 40 
Do we do those tests? Do we go for yearly checkup or two, two years yearly checkup? Do we do things like that? Are we aware of our physical, um, our optimal health and functioning? Do we, are we conscious of our physical health, our breathing? Our, I was sick in January and um, what saved me was because I could realize that um, I usually walk, I run, I do exercise, I do a lot of that. And I realized that I couldn't even to walk. It was difficult for me to do a 5K. I was finishing a 5K walk, not even a run now. I was finishing it in like one hour, 10 minutes. So I knew something was wrong with me. And I'm not feeling totally well. So when I got back home, I told my husband, I'm not, I'm not feeling well. I need to go to the hospital. And immediately I went to the hospital. And right there and there, I mean, it was a life-saving moment for me to realize that there's something wrong with me. So do we listen to our breathing? Do we know how our body function was the optimal way we are supposed to be? Physical activity, fitness, it helps a lot. It strengthens our bones and muscles. It reduces risk of disease and stroke and gives us more energy. It gives vitality to us. This adrenaline that we get when we exercise is superb. Money can buy it. Money can buy it, but our body can achieve it when we put ourselves through physical exercise. 30 minutes and you are good to go five times a week and you're good to go. You don't, it doesn't have to be something rigorous. It doesn't have to be so demanding. It doesn't have to be something that takes your whole energy away and leaves you breathless. And of course, when we're talking about food, we need to also note that it's important that we're also taking a lot of water, a lot of water. Our body consists of majorly I mean, water. And so, of course, we need to keep replenishing it. And of course, here in Nigeria, most especially Lagos, our weather is so hot. Our weather is so hot and humid. And of course, we need to keep taking water. We need to keep replenishing our body. How do we improve our physical wetness? I've mentioned this exercise 30 minutes each day, five days a week or four days a week. Start small, use staircase instead of elevator. Recognize signs when your body begins feeling ill. It's easy. It's lifesaver when you identify that I'm having a pain here. This pain is not is not usually here, but I'm having this pain here. You should be able to pay attention to our body and not just um, ignore them. And of course, our eating we should eat wholesome food. Some of us may be placed on. We may prefer to eat. Um, with bread instead of uh, white bread. Some do oatmeal, some do oat bread, some take banana, some take fruit, some supplement with vegetables, but we must be well aware and ensure that whatever we are eating, whatever we are putting into our body is balanced diet. And then as we grow, as we age, we need to be more and more conscious and not just um, eat junk and um, you know, burden our body unnecessarily, then of course we can control our meal portions. Whatever we are eating, we don't need to eat a big bowl of, even if it is salad, it doesn't have to be a big extra large bowl of salad that you must eat before you know that you are eating salad. Then of course, like I said, you must drink water and drink water and more water. And as I've mentioned earlier, we must try to sleep between seven to nine hours each night. It may seem this is not realistic, but at least seven hours we must try to achieve it. It's a is a way is a is a nature's way by which God has created for our body to replenish itself. During the day, we have exacted energy. We have run around. We've gone to church. We've gone to work. We've driven in traffic. We've done all of that. It's our body way of recovering from all that tax when we have a restful night and of course the final one when we're talking about international wellness what does it mean it means engaging in creative and stimulating mental activities to expand our knowledge and our skills this can be achieved through self-directed behavior i mean when you focus on learning when you want to learn when you determine to learn something is important for us to explore new ideas and understanding in order for us to become mindful and better rounded. When you 
are well-rounded, you'll be able to give back to people, you'll be able to impact on people, you know, you have the mental balance. Now, the intentional wellness also stimulates our curiosity. And what is curiosity? Curiosity is important because it motivates you to try new things and develop an understanding and how you see the relationship between yourselves, others, and the environment. How do we improve on our intellectual wellness? By reading. Read. Read the book. It improves our memory. It improves our vocabulary. It increases our capacity to empathize with others. We need to explore. We need to act, interact with the world around us to improve our intellectual wellness. Some of us, we don't go beyond our circle of friends. Some of us, we don't go beyond our circle of um, um, you know, our environments, we don't really relate. And of course, in this kind of um, um, part of the world that we live in, uh, we may not be able to easily find nature work, we may not be easily be able to find a museum that you want to go and visit. But of course, we should explore, take time out once in a quarter, go and watch a movie, just, you know, do something different so that you can't you know, be stimulated, you can feel good. Create, um, then create, being able to create those wonders for both your intellectual and mental health. It's similar to the positive effect of reading. When you are creative, when you are able to, probably you could be a fine artist, you could paint, you can draw, you can um, create something, you can, even there are apps, there's an app that I had to download, uh, I think, what's the name now? Um, the name of the app is Elevate. It's a game where I downloaded it. And what does it do? You, you play games of word puzzles, games of arithmetic. You know, not every time we should play Candy Crush. I play Candy Crush too, but I also have Elevate because you do mental clarity, helps with mental clarity. You do arithmetic, there's arithmetic in that game. There is an English vocabulary. It gives you a wrong word. It asks you to correct it, or it puts a, 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 a right word, a correct word. It asks you to check whether it's right or not. So you have to know whether it's wrong or not before you please yes or no, you know, things like that. So we shouldn't just think that we are too much to play certain games. Those kind of games, it helps our mental clarity. And so I want to encourage us to you know, to consider it, to do things beyond our ordinary sphere of life, beyond what we usually do previously. So at this junction, I'm going to share this Arabian proverb, which is on hope. He who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. So whatever situation we are going through, one thing we must not look for cause of is hope. We must continue to ensure that we have hope. When you have hope, you have life. Now, we are at this point, we are at this junction. Wellness and Christianity, how do we balance the two? Many people tend to see people in the fitness uh, group as not being Christianity or Christian-like, you know, but of course we need to go beyond that. We need to embrace it. And what does the Bible says about it? What does God wants us to do? God wants us to care for our body. And so how do you care for your body? By exercising your body. So you need to take a walk. You need to run. You need to exercise. If you need to join that gym, you need to join that gym. If you need to exercise at home, you can exercise at home. I have not, not been to a gym. Maybe twice that I've been to a gym. So all my exercises, I do them in my house or, or go out on a road run. So don't say I don't even have money for gym. You don't have to go to gym to be healthy. You can exercise right there in your home, in your city room with your children, in your compound. You can do all of that. God wants us to care for our body. Third so John wants to say, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Secondly, honor your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you know you that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. That is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. So when we exercise, when we do the right thing, when we feed our body correctly, we are honoring God. We need to ensure that we don't abuse our body. 
I've come to a point to realize that I'm abusing my body when I take too much of carbonated drinks. As much as it's not healthy, I won't lie, I take one or two. But it got to a point that I realized that if I take two bottles of Coke in a day and then probably tomorrow I take another one or I take a bottle of Coke for like three days consecutively, I would go into anxiety. I would, my body would, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I wouldn't be able to sleep. It will knock me off. So I've come to realize that my body does not like it. Even when I take cake, too much sugary things, my body is rejecting it at this point in time. So we need to pay attention to our body. We need to realize and bring it and align with it. Our body and ourselves, our mind, we should be able to align the three. Create healthy eating habits. Food does not bring us near to God. And of course, we need to bring our anxiety to God, not food. Some people, they, they, they tell you, uh, I eat when I'm stressed. I eat when I'm this. I eat when I'm that. I binge. They don't just eat, they binge. You know, just keep eating, just keep stuffing yourself with those sugary things just because you're anxious, you're worried and all of that. I'm talking to myself. Please don't think um, I, I'm above you. I'm on a, on a pedestal beyond you all. I'm talking to myself as well. Do not be anxious about anything or in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. So, physical exercise is good for us. Spiritual exercise is much, much better for us. How do we incorporate spiritual exercise? Fasting. You don't have to wait until your church says fast for 30 days or 60 days. You can fast one day a week. You can fast for 10 hours. You can fast for 12 hours before you eat. Oh, I don't eat. I don't eat. But you can't just, you know, avoid stuffing yourself with food for a particular period of time during the day. And you'll be fine. There's nothing wrong with you. So 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, 18 hours, you can do that. Not wait deliberately for church to do those spiritual exercises. You can even do them as part of your fitness, as part of your wellness bank and, and do that. No spiritual exercise daily in God, no spiritual flabbiness. Please work out in the gymnasium as useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more so, making you fit both today and forever. That is the message Bible saying, and that is from 1 Timothy 4, 7, and um, you know, be part. More than anything else, let us be hungry for God. Let us feed our soul with the word of God. Praise the Lord. So your journey to wellness, how do you want to start it? Some of us may want to start our journey to wellness. What do you need to do? From my own point of view, I will say, firstly, I will say, call back to Jesus Christ. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. He is the owner of your soul. There's nothing we can do without him. He's our all in all. He's everything. He's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the beginning, he's the end. He's everything and everything is him. So I think that first step, we need to take it. We need to align ourselves back to God. After that, what do I really need in my life right now? Not what you want. Focus on what you actually need in your life to, in order for you to be your best. For me, what my, I may realize may be different from what you realize. Someone else may realize I need to go on a weight loss journey. Someone may realize I need to just maintain my shape the way I am now. No, I should not add to it. Or let me just maintain it the way it is. Some may realize that they need to be more dedicated to certain things. Some may realize they need to stop certain habits. Some may realize different things. Whatever you are realizing, do it as a scale of preference, what you need to do this step that you need to take. This is step one. This is step two. What is no longer serving me well in my life? What could I let go of? Like I mentioned earlier, certain things that news that we listen to, that we expose ourselves to, it affects our wellness. We hear news, we read bad news, and we are fearful. We are, we are worried. We panic. That, ha, hey, how are we going to do it? you know you know those are things that you know so sometimes we may need to shield ourselves from those 
arenas that we probably know that all you get there is bad news. All you get here on that blog is bad news. So just keep away, just stay away for your own sanity, for your own wellness. Just keep away. There may be relationships that are no longer serving you. Friends, abandon them. Just, just let it go. Because your wellness is most important. People that go trip you. You cannot talk. You cannot do this. You, can, you will bury me. You never ask of me. I'm always the one. Look, you know, they never want to hear your own point of view. It's just about me, 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 me. It's all, you know, those are things that are no longer serving. What makes you feel good? What do you need to boost? What is something I could do to take better care of myself? What changes do I want to see for myself? Why do I want this? And that why is the most important part of the journey. You need to find your why. Even if you're on a weight loss journey that, that you know, there are bumps on the way, but you need to find your why. And it is your why that will keep you going on that journey. So whatever journey you want to start, however you want to start that journey, even if in your, is, is, you're concentrating on your occupational wellness, okay, I want to step out of being working with this company, I want to join, I want to start my own organization, I want to start my own business, you need to find your why. Your why will keep you going, will keep you focused on the days when you don't make sales, on the day when you need to sleep at 1 a.m., on the days when you need to wake up at 4 a.m. to make some sales calls, sales delivery, and things like that. So whatever journey we are on, we decide to take, we need to find our why. Our why will keep us on that journey, to keep us granted, grounded on that journey. What changes am I actually willing to commit to seeing through? Like I mentioned, 30 minutes a day of exercise, taking more water. Maybe you're taking one liter of water, you can increase it to two liters of water each day. Just keep, you know, little, little changes like that. How much time can, real, can I realistically devote to my wellness journey each day? How much time can I realistically devote to my, to my um, um, alone time, to my me time, to my prayer time? Those are things. How much time do I, can I commit to reading a book a day? So at this point, I'd like to ask if any one of us has questions so that I could quickly handle that before our time is up. Thank you very much. God bless you. That was indeed a great one. And thank you for the sacrifice. I know like uh, somebody like you, at this time you should be uh, getting ready to go to bed, but you have sacrificed today for us. We are so grateful. I have a question here. Some, uh, you mentioned one game earlier. So somebody wants you to uh, say it again so that they can pick it. The okay, name of elevate. The elevate. Elevate. Okay. Yes, elevate. I'll, I'll just pick that. Okay, I'll put it on okay. the chat as well. Elevate. All right. So, um, name of the game again. I am not seeing any other question here. Let me check all the other listings to be sure there's no. Okay, then. That's the only question I can see there. I'm not seeing any. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. So, I mean, at this point in time, I want to believe that uh, we all follow through. I could also make this available by um, sharing a copy with uh, my sister so that she can send to every one of us so that we can, um, you know, go through them again and, um, you know, take one or two lessons. But before you them. go, I have a question because I, of course, I have people uh, in this issue in, uh, in the aspect of counseling. You have people are uh, part of the, you talk about your professional uh, wellness and you're talking about when you are going for your, your about your work, are you happy doing that job? I have instances of people that, you know, that uh, enthusiasm of, you know, waking up in the morning, morning. and say, I'm happy, I'm going to work and things like that is not the, 
it's not they're just going to that work just for going probably because uh, i didn't go i don't have any other job and things like that what do you think should be the way out for such people what do you think they can do okay what i would first say i mean everyone has gone through that circle through that motion to say i've not gone through it i would be lying I've gone through that circle where I would um, have even gotten another job. I just want to quit. I just want to leave and, you know, and all of that. But what I did, what my husband, you know, usually do, what we need, the number one thing I want to believe that we need is support. We need to have support of wherever we are with. If we are married, we need to have your support of your husband for whatever we are doing. I mean, I believe things like this should be discussed between husband and wife, not that you just go and drop your resignation letter and say, I'm tired, I'm not going to this office again, whatever they like, they should do. No, you have to consider the family comes first. So at this point, it's not just yourself. And even if it's just you that is working, you're single and you're working and you get tired and frustrated, I would advise, take it deep breath. Don't just turn in your resignation and take a walk. That is not how to do it. What I did when I, at that low point, what my husband usually would do is to tell me that um, I should be thankful that I even have that job. At all times, that kept me and that is what had helped me. Now, when you look around you and when you look at your contemporaries that whoever it is that we are thinking we are comparing ourselves with and we are thinking we are not doing well and so we are pressuring ourselves, and that you see that you're doing well. You just don't know it, you're doing well. So why are you pressuring yourself? You want to hear 1 million a month, but you're earning 500 and that 500, when you take out your, your expense and everything, you still have like, um, maybe you're not spending so much on traffic. You're not wasting too much or committing to that office and you still have like 400K left. But somebody earning a million that lives in Korodu and works in VI, the time committing to, 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 to work, it's so, um, you know, has eaten up. They don't have time. The rest of the money that they're supposed to use to do other things, they've spent it on bills. They have to pay nanny, they have to pay this, they have to pay that, you know, because of the time they are not going to be around for the children, they're not going to be around for the family. So sometimes you need to wait. You need to weigh it and weigh your decisions at, at, at each point. But most importantly, what I say, when you find yourself like you seem to be in a, 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 a rough, you don't like that, you don't like that office, you're tired, you feel frustrated and all of that, take a retrospect, think inward, be grateful for the work that you have, and then you can have more. And of course, connect, connection now in terms of your connect, your social connection, your CV, your profile on LinkedIn, update it, put your CV up together. I mean, some of us, we don't even update our CV because we have a job and it's paying our bills and we don't bother about things like that. So of course, if you are eager, if you're looking forward to opportunities, then you need to make yourself opportunity ready. Not that somebody asks you to send in your CV in the next five minutes, ah, you will give me like some days, or let me, I, I can't even find my CV, I need to look for my CV. You need to first look for your CV. So those are things that we also need to do. And of course, if you're in such situation, there are ways we can develop ourselves and make ourselves more um, like a, something that they cannot do without in the organization, you know, like a, 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 a rock solid team. You must make yourself that, improve yourself. You need to improve yourself, do more readings, sponsor yourself if, if you can attend one or two workshops or short courses just to improve yourself and make yourself, you know, worthy of whatever position you are looking forward to in your organization. But most importantly, be grateful that you even have that job at any point in time. Don't feel frustrated and throw in the towel and walk away. Thank you. Thank you very much. In your response, well, I have a question here. Uh, you mentioned uh, somebody working, uh, somebody living in a Korodu and working on the highlands. Now, you have advice under our physical wellness that we must have uh, seven to nine sleeping hours. <laughs> For somebody, <Sorry. laughs> no, we just want to help ourselves. You know, 
some some situation that you know just out of the way but at least irrespective of that we just have one life to live so i just want us to look for a way to help ourselves at least if not uh, optimally at least in a way how do we walk around it for somebody of course Korodu is still close there are some people from abel Kuta to lagos or to the island some go as far as whatever and they will have to leave the house early in the morning four o'clock and the day there is traffic, maybe they won't get home until 12 midnight and they have to leave four o'clock. If they don't leave, they will get there to work. So they must leave the house four o'clock and they will get home by 12 or even past 12. So how such a person, of course, the person has to be well, so spiritual and body too. So how can such people, you know, work around it? Uh, this, this, this is a big one, this is a big one. It's something that we have gone through as a family. It's a big one. Um, and it's not something that we should take lightly. Uh, if you need to relocate, you need to relocate. If you need to move your house into somewhere more conducive, please do. I would advise that you do that. But of course, the phone may not be there and all of that. So probably what you do, instead of um, doing all the driving yourself, if you are driving, Maybe you do pull cards together with someone else too that you can catch up on sleep while you are commuting to work. Or probably you take a bus and then you can make sure that you catch some rest while you are being driven, you know, to and fro work because um, we need to we need to sleep. And of course, if only if you're unable to catch up on sleep during the week, please make sure that over the weekend you ensure you have the rest. Rest, I say, rest is king. Um, for me, for my family, what happened in that situation, my husband was working in Lekki and we were living at Ipaja. And of course, I think that was when they were doing the road. That was 2014 now. And there were times he would come back home like um, 11, 10, 30, 9, 30. And then eventually there was a time he got home 1 a.m. And of course, as a banker, you will have woken up like 4.30 so that you can leave the house like 5, 5.30. So you're not even seeing your children. You only have the weekend, Saturday, and then of course, Sunday, the kind of denomination you belong to. You spend the whole day, you even have gotten up, make sure you are in church by seven, you don't even get back home until one. The kind of department he's working with is an usher in the church and of course they have to, even when we are closed in church and going home, they still have to count money, count the offering and that's another one hour, another 90 minutes or even not two hours. So of course he was telling on us. So eventually we made a, an effort and we moved to Bagada. Of course, it may not be so affordable for anyone to move and say, because of course, housing in Bagada is more expensive than housing in Paja. But of course, there are ways of looking at it. I have a colleague now, he lives in Aton and he works in Ikeja, Jerry. By the time uh, COVID happened, I think before COVID happened, he, he, he took ill and he, he was having difficulties working and all of that. It was a serious two to three month period for him. Eventually what he did, was to stay back at the office. So he comes in very early on Monday morning. By 4 a.m., he leaves the house. He, get, he stays in office from Monday to Thursday. So Thursday morning, he goes back home. So to say you, you're a champion and you can do it and you are strong and you are doing, we are deceiving ourselves. It will tell on the body eventually. So we need to find a way to balance it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. That was a wonderful one. So what I could see there is wisdom. So some, sometimes it's not about luxury. It's about what works for you. you exactly. Say because um, what would people say? You don't really have the money, but it's about... It's, one thing I want each and every one of us to know is that we just got seen one life, one life to live. And you are, the sole, you are the one responsible for every decision about your life. We, Part of the point for spiritual wellness is meditation. You know, we just need to take time off um, and meditate. You want to think about where did you come from? How did you start? Where are you? Where are you going? I mean, what are you looking at? Are you doing, are there things you are doing right? Are there things you are doing wrong? So are there things you need to correct? You know, because sometimes 
some of us will, will think we are saving costs. And at the end of the day, the cost you think you are saving, by the time you are going to vomit that cost, if your life didn't go for it, then you should thank God for your life. I pray the Lord will help us and give us wisdom to uh, help us to apply our heart into wisdom in Jesus' name. I don't know if you have round up or you still have Yes, I, I, I'm done at this point. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Me. So, uh, I'm able, women of honor, can you help me tell our guests thank you for coming? We appreciate you. God bless you. And we hope to see you, thank you. next time that we we will we'll need you. Thank, thank you, you for, for coming. Me. Thank you. We appreciate thank you for having time. me. Thank you. Thank you. God, God bless you. We appreciate you so much. And we hope next time we call on you, you'll be there for us. So I we still have 10 minutes more. And um, we've listened. But it's not about just listening. We talk about our spiritual wellness too and we have just uh, that's what i've just said now now we've asked so many things tonight it's wisdom would demand that after leaving this place not just okay we have come for program after i just forget about it you have moved on if at the end of the day having listened to all this it cannot impact our life and we cannot apply it to our life in one way or the other to make our life better so it means it's a waste of time and it doesn't worth it. Just like we have said, we've gotten one, just one life to live. And you know, uh, you said uh, 60 seconds, make one minute, 60 minutes, make one hour, 24 hours, make a day, seven days a week, like that, like that. So if you spend one hour of our life, out of our life and you know, we did not achieve the objective of that time. It's a waste. So part of that wellness is when you live here, you want to, you know, all that we have talked about, you want to look at which one are you doing right? The one you are doing right, you take it. The one you think you need to work upon. So you, 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 how, how do you want to go about it? And I think there was a place she was taking, telling us uh, we should focus on what we need and not what we want. And it talks, she also talked about our why, the reason why we are doing what we are doing. We should find our why. Don't just do things because others are doing it. Find your why. And I pray the Lord will help us to apply our heart unto wisdom in Jesus. We are going to pray and tell the Lord, Father, all that I've learned tonight, help me to apply it to my life, even to my family. You know, help me because it's not enough for us to just hear and not be able to apply it to our life. Grant me wisdom to apply everything you have brought my way to make my life better, to make me to be able to maximize my potential. You know, uh, during the course of a week, of course, we all know what happened in the Christendom recently. And somebody was like, the day somebody told her that if the day your body collapses, there is nothing you can do about it again. The reason why you are still alive is because your body can still accommodate you. If you don't take care of your body and your body collapses, that is the end of it. So... And we are going to pray and tell the Lord, help me to apply my heart unto wisdom. That which you have brought to my way tonight, help me to apply my heart unto wisdom for myself and my family and to make me a better, a better woman for me to maximize my potential in the life, in my life, in the life of my husband, in the life of my children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. Father, we pray tonight in the name of you, everything we have brought our way tonight. That's what you have made us to oh, learn today. We pray for grace, oh, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for the wisdom to oh, apply our hands to yeah, wisdom yeah, in the mighty yeah, name of Jesus that tonight will not be a waste in our life. We pray you grant us that wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In that precious name of Jesus. Malik, Oshanda, David, Sophia, 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 S
Lord, I pray for myself. I pray for every woman that is being represented on this platform tonight. Everyone, name and time, every woman of honor. Lord, we pray for the grace to apply our hands unto wisdom and to put into practice. Lord, in the name of God that we have been taught, Lord in Jesus' name, that we might be able to maximize our potential. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the name of the Lord will not become a copy on in our life, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray you grant to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to pray and tell the Lord that having done all, though, you know, when she started, she said everything, the first thing we need is, is what? What did she say the first thing we need? Jesus. Jesus. So you, you want to be surprised that we are talking about wellness and somebody is talking about Jesus. So that is the Bible says, having done all. Mm -hmm. So as much as we are doing all that is expected of us, uh, mental awareness, uh, spiritual awareness, everything wellness, having done all, we still have to ask for his mercy. That having done all, let your mercy be sufficient for me. Let your mercy be sufficient for my own. Let your mercy be sufficient for my husband. We are going to say, Father, let your mercy be sufficient for me. In the assignment of humanhood, that I will not fail myself, I will not fail you, Lord. I will not fail my family in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mercy be sufficient for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray not tonight. We have come to realize that all we need is you. Everything starts from you. Everything ends with you. Even while we play our part, Lord, of the covenant, Lord, we pray your mercy will be sufficient for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your mercy be sufficient for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we share our part of the covenant, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, your mercy will be sufficient for us. In that precious name of Jesus, your mercy will be sufficient for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we will not fail ourselves, we will not fail you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will not fail our husband, we will not fail our children, Lord, your mercy will be sufficient for us. In that precious name of Jesus, your mercy will be sufficient for us, Lord, in that precious name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Just going to pray and tell the Lord for those who are bereaved at this time, Father, be prepared to comfort mm -hmm. your soul and encourage them. Mm -hmm. Everyone all over the world that are going through one situation or the other that need encouragement, Father, please encourage them. Those who mm -hmm. need support, support them. Father, reach mm -hmm. out to your children all over the world that are going through one thing or the other at this time. They come as a body and we say, Father, in your infinite mercy. For those that need your encouragement right now, Father, encourage them from God, from soul, in the name of Jesus, be there for them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, would you comfort my God? Lord, we commit your children all over the world into your hands, Father. Lord, at this time, we pray you'll be there to comfort, to console, not to encourage, to support in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of God. They will in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We are going to say, Father, by your mercy, my money has been good. I think most of us are in the afternoon of our life or something. My afternoon is, is being good. My night, by your mercy, will be good and pleasant in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mercy see me through. See me through my lifetime. The assignment of womanhood. Let your mercy see me through. That my money has been good. My afternoon continue to be good. And the evening of my life, Lord, by your mercy, will be pleasant, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The evening of my life, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, will be glorious in the precious name of Jesus. Your mercy will be Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that my, the afternoon of my life will continue to be glorious. And give me of my life will be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. That shall be your loss in my camp in the mighty name of Jesus. By your mercy, in the precious name of Jesus. And I thank you, my God, because the evening of my life is even much more pleasant. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lastly, before we go to 
uh, the session that where we're going to ask God for what we, we want, we are going to pray and tell the Lord, Father, by your mercy, I refuse to labor for another man to inherit. We are not the generation of women that will labor for another woman to inherit. We are not the generation of women that will labor and the day of the joy of our children, they will say, let's observe a mini silence for, for, for the mother. By your mercy, Lord, you will cause me to hear the fruit of my labor in the name of Jesus. By your mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my children will not go before me. I will not know the grave of my children, Lord, in the name of Jesus. By your mercy, we are only hoping and trusting in your mercy. Lord, we pray by your mercy, we shall not labor for another woman to inherit. We shall not labor for another man to inherit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will not know the graveyard of our children. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I knew the beginning of my children. Lord, I will not know the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, when it matters most, you will raise people to death for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are hoping and trusting in your mercy. Not on the work of our righteousness, not in our ability to pray, not in our holy living, but we are hoping and trusting your mercy, that Lord concerning us in the name of Jesus, in an even way, women of honor, that we are not the generation of women that will labor for another man to inherit in the name of Jesus, we shall live to, be, to eat the fruit of our labor, in the name of Jesus, and we shall not know the graveyard of our children, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Uh, in just one minute, I wouldn't know if there is anything you want to talk to God about. So I just need us to go to God and ask God that God be whatever you need. Whatever you want God to do for you, talk to God. Talk to God about it. I don't know. He promised to grant the desire of our acts in the name of Jesus. Talk to God. What is that you desire God to do for you? in Jesus mighty name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. And so thank you tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. We appreciate you because we are faithful. Yes, thank Lord. you because it take you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to bring these people for this program tonight. It takes you for you to gather people to, your, to yourself. And Daddy, we thank you for that which we have been taught tonight. And we thank you because grace to apply them into our life has been released unto us. So yes. you be all the glory. We thank mm. you for another that you have used for us tonight. We thank mm. you for this good operation tonight. We thank you for a good network tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for the every family that is being represented here tonight. We appreciate you. We say, be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Lord, as we have said in the secret of our heart, mm -hmm. whatsoever is our desire, mm -hmm. Lord, I pray in your infinite mercy, Lord, you will grant all our, our desire according to your purpose in glory, in the name of Jesus. Those who want your Amen. intervention in one thing or the other, those who desire certain gifts or certain blessing from you and have asked you. Lord, the Bible says every good and perfect gift is from you, Lord. Lord, yes, I pray you release unto them the desires of their hearts in the mighty yes, name of Jesus. Amen. And you cause them, Lord, to return with their testimony to yes, the glory of your name and to the shame of the devil. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, once again, Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all your children all over the world. We declare Amen. peace, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Those who are going Amen. through one thing or the other, Lord, we pray you you'll be there for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray Amen. for something else in our neighborhood, women of honor. We declare by your mercy that we are not the generation of women that labor for another man or woman to inherit. In the name of Jesus, we Amen. shall live to him in our labor. In the name of Jesus, on the Amen. day of the joy of our children, Amen. we shall be alive and well. In the Amen. name of Jesus, 
Nobody Amen. will observe a minute silence for us Amen. in that precious name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, wonderful Amen. Father. We give Amen. you all the praise. As we go Amen. in the course of this, Amen. Lord, we pray you ahead of us in that mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we take the ministry of the Amen. angels in the name of Jesus to go ahead of us and clear the every evil that has been programmed into the week concerning us. Let your angels go ahead of us and avert all the evils in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, wonderful Father. Amen. Amen. We give you all the glory. Thank you because every mountain before us shall be made plain in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because every body shall be exalted. We give you all the praise. We say be exalted, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. Lord, I pray for Sunday, every name after an able woman of honor. For as many, Lord, in the name of Jesus that are going through one thing or the other, or desire one thing or the other from you, Lord, we pray you will visit them in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who need encounter, Lord, we give them encounters that will transform to their manifestation in the Amen. precious name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, wonderful Father. Amen. Lord, because you Amen. know, we know that you are able to do exceeding abundance Amen. above what we think or has, according Amen. to your power that works in us. So you behold the glory. Amen. For we pray and receive with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And if you are God, we say, Amen. 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 I, I want to thank God for our lives. Every one of us that has joined tonight. But I'm seeing two guests. I'm seeing two people here that guess. Mr. Shebun Dolu. I know you though it's a woman program. I don't know whether you are the one or your wife. You are watching together. I I trust God that um, the blessing you have received shall be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Then I'm seeing your daily. Amen. You already left. Um, God bless you and thank you for coming. And we Amen. hope next week, by the grace of God, we will be praying next week. And as we come together to pray, our desire shall be granted unto us in Jesus' name. Once Amen. again, I want to say thank Amen. you to our guests. God bless you and honor your sacrifice of love in Jesus' name. We expect that God will visit you and surprise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's share the grace of fellowship. The grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surely, surely, shall follow us all the days of our lives, all the days of our lives, and we shall be with the friends of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. Stay blessed, be rapturable. Mm -hmm. That's my hug. <laughs>